Hey guys, welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are starting with gene transfer in bacteria or uh, recombination in bacteria. And we know that there are three types of uh, gene transfer methods in bacteria which are conjugation, transformation and transduction. So what we will do is in today's video we will talk about conjugation and in next two videos we will uh, continue with transformation and transduction. Now this type of gene transfer in bacteria is also known as horizontal gene transfer. Alright and why is it that they are called horizontal gene transfer what is the reason behind it so to understand this let's first briefly uh, let me tell you what is happening during conjugation transformation and transduction in conjugation there is a gene transfer between two bacteria okay there's a physical contact required between two bacteria and gene gets transferred between two bacteria in case of transformation there is uptake of naked DNA to bacteria from its surrounding environment okay a piece of DNA would be taken up by a bacteria from its surrounding environment and in case of transduction it is the gene transferred from virus to bacteria we are going to see all one by one so if you look at these methods you know what is happening is not our typical uh, parent cell to daughter cell or parent cell to offspring gene transfer right that is what is happening uh, typically uh, in vertical gene transfer this is what is vertical gene transfer from parent cell to daughter cell or from parent to offspring this is not the same thing here it is the gene transfer either among the bacteria or a direct DNA pieces taken up or from virus to bacteria so the way of gene transfer is different okay and that is why these three methods of gene transfer is called horizontal gene transfer Alright, so this much is clear. Now let's start with conjugation. So to understand conjugation, let's make couple of points clear. Uh, first thing is conjugation is gene transfer between two bacteria and it requires physical contact, right? Now if there's two bacteria for gene transfer, that means there has to be a donor and there has to be a recipient. Alright, so what is the difference between a donor cell and a recipient cell? Now bacteria of course is going to have its DNA this is uh, shown green in color and other than this uh, DNA some of the bacteria would have the extra chromosomal DNA we know about plasmid it is extra chromosomal DNA and it replicates independently so the bacteria that contains specific uh, plasmid called F plasmid which contains specific F factor F factor or which is also called fertility factor see from the term we can understand that it has something to do with uh, fertility that means something to do with gene transfer so that means the F plasmid contains the F factor or fertility factor which has the genes needed to carry out the gene transfer so the bacteria that has this F plasmid is acting as donor and they are designated as F plus cell f plus simply because they have the f factor okay so they are f plus cells which are acting as donor on the other hand the recipient cells are the cells which lack the f factor or they do not have the f plasmid so they are simply called f minus cells or they are the recipient cell okay this much is clear all right now this much is clear this base is very important to understand the conjugation process and there are three cases that we need to understand in conjugation let's look at them one by one so the first uh, category is as simple as that we just saw two types of cell F plus and F minus so it's a gene transfer it's a cross between F plus cell and F minus cell F plus cell would act as donor it would have the F plasmid extra chromosomal uh, DNA and F minus recipient would have only the DNA now as I mentioned before F plasmid is what is going to carry out the gene transfer right that means F plasmid directs the synthesis of something called as sex pili okay it's like uh, uh, it's going to act as a cytoplasmic bridge between two bacteria so we just spoke about it that for conjugation there has to be physical contact between two bacteria and that is provided by the formation of this pili coded by the F plasmid so this results 
in formation of cytoplasmic bridge through which the genetic element is transferred now once this uh, contact is established what happens is one strand of the f plasmid will start getting transfer into the recipient bacteria okay and once it is transferred in the recipient cell in both donor and recipient cell the second complementary strand of the plasmid would start synthesizing so in the end of conjugation once the plasmid is transferred and it is replicated this uh, physical contact will be released and what we get in the end is both the bacteria containing the copy of f plasmid now both the bacteria has the same f plasmid so what has happened we started with f plus and f minus right and in the end we got both the f plus cell because now this recipient cell also contains a copy of the f plasmid so we can sum it up like this in conjugation f plus and f minus cross cross between f plus cell and f minus cell results in f plus cell and f plus cell okay because this recipient cell also now contains the copy of f plasmid and thus it can also act as donor and it is going to carry out the same cycle again it will act as donor and it will donate the f plasmid to, to any other f minus cell all right so this is what happens in f plus and f minus cross now let's uh, look at the next case now the next case is cross between hfr cell and f minus cell now let's first understand what is this hfr cell hfr stands for high frequency of recombination now what that means is hfr is nothing but a derivative of f plus cell itself now the plasmid can act as epizoome what does that mean that means the plasmid can either uh, you know uh, appear as independent uh, in bacteria in the cytoplasm or it can also integrate itself in the bacterial chromosome it has the ability to exist in either way so what happens is sometimes when this plasmid gets integrated into the bacterial chromosome here you can see this green color is bacterial chromosome and this red is f plasmid of course it is double stranded just for easier understanding i have shown one strand so now this is called hfr strain and why is it called hfr strain what is the reason to understand this let's first understand the whole procedure what is happening in this once we understand the procedure it will become clear to understand why is it called hfr okay so i'll tell you at the end of this process so now we have the f plus cell which has become the hfr that means the f plasmid has integrated into the bacterial chromosome and this is our f minus cell normal recipient cell that does not have the f plasmid now what happens is once this physical contact is established along with the f factor some part of the host chromosome also would get transferred into the recipient chromosome and there can be any uh, random breakage that is going to occur and it is going to interrupt the uh, process of this transfer so the complete uh, chromosome is not going to get transferred only part of the chromosome would transferred and that would result in uh, some part of f plasmid and some part of host chromosome entering into the recipient cell and this chromosomal fragment now would enter or integrate into the recipient chromosome now as you can see the resultant uh, bacteria is f minus only because it does not contain the complete uh, f plasmid to become f plus cell so it is going to remain f minus but you can see that there is a high degree of recombination because it contain its own dna it has got the donor's dna and also some part of the f plasmid so there so there's a high recombination uh, occurred in this strain and that is why these cells are called hfr high frequency of recombination because when they combined or they cross with f minus cell the resultant strains are going to have high degree of recombination okay so now i hope it is clear that why they are called hfr cells that is high frequency of recombination so we can sum it up like this hfr strains when cross with f minus cells they are going to remain as it is hfr cell plus f minus f minus would remain f minus because as i said it does not receive the complete f plasmid to become f plus cell all right now let's move on to the third case now the third 
case is a uh, cross between f prime and f minus cell or f dash and f minus cell so what is this f prime cells now as we just discussed that f plasmid is acting as uh, episome that means it can integrate itself into the host chromosome or it can exist independently so once it is uh, integrated into the host chromosome it can again detach itself from the host chromosome now when uh, this release happens it is possible that the genes that are located near the f plasmid you know this uh, release is not exact and the genes that are close to this f plasmid also get picked up during this uh, detachment and the f plasmid would have some portion of the host chromosome okay this is a complete f plasmid containing some portion or the genes that were very close to the f plasmid so again the same thing f prime crosses f minus there will be physical contacts and this f plasmid would start getting transfer one strand would start getting transfer along with some portion of the host chromosome also okay and in the end of the transfer the second or the complementary strand in both the cells would be uh, synthesized so as you can see the resultant of this f prime into f minus is f prime plus f prime cell that is because this cell recipient cell also now contain complete f plasmid along with some genes that were attached to it okay exact copy of that so we can sum it up like this f prime cells crossing with f minus cells resulting in f prime plus f prime cell okay this f prime cell can again carry out the same process it, it can carry out the gene transfer to the f minus cell so so these are the three cases that we need to consider when we talk about uh, conjugation that is f plus into f minus cell hfr uh, into f minus cell and f prime into f minus cell so that's all for now i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i'll see you next time until then keep learning